Welcome to Cozy Pickers Podcast. My mommy Shan. Hey. My hey. sister Ari. Say hi, Ari. Hey. And I'm Anya. Let's go. Hey, this is Shan. Mom of the girls, thank you for checking in. If this is your first time at Cozy Womb Podcast, welcome. It's a very random but frequently posted show. Enjoy what you can when you can. It's for new parents. Y'all are very welcome. It's for a second, third, or more time around parents too. And I did not forget those of you who aren't quite there yet, haven't had your first kid, but you're thinking about it and you're just curious on what it takes to go ahead and survive the kids that you may make. Cool. Since we're all here, let's get into today's episode. Feeding your kids talents is something that you really want to do. I think all kids have an inner brilliance as to what they naturally are great at. And as a mother, I feel like it's my duty to figure it out or see it in them so I can nurture it, so I can make sure they have the tools to make whatever they're really good at better or whatever they're really passionate about better. You know, um, fathers too, if you see your kids doing something or they have a a good interest in something and they do it, you know, without a lot of effort put behind it and it's just really seamless, you have to figure out what it is that they need to go ahead and make that a bit better. We feed their space to, you know, grow in whatever they're good at. It could be writing. It could be um, reading on higher levels. It could be doing hard math problems. It could be sports. It could be um, art. It could be um, figuring out how things work, like, really quickly. And I'm just going to go over, like, ten things that will help you... uh, feed your kids talents so um the first thing i would do is allow your kids to express themselves freely without judgment so don't stop them um in the middle of what they're doing to judge them on why they're doing it that way or what they're doing just encourage them and just observe second thing is to observe them without knowing that they're being watched because some kids once they know that they're being watched they'll stop or they don't want to do it or they instantly feel embarrassed like me when I was younger I hated the spotlight so a lot of what my mom did is watch from afar or um show me what she liked my mom was a great illustrator she loved drawing plants like without even looking at it just off of memory in full detail and then uh i love drawing automatically even before i knew that that was her thing i love coloring books uh, my mom is a great seamstress uh, she made wedding dresses she would make hats from scratch for all the church ladies in philly uh, she made she did upholstery she still sews now she sews for my daughters and um, her other grandchildren she loves it like that's her thing she loves it and she's always been like really great at it um when it came to projects she was excellent at doing like school projects with us Uh, one memorable project that she did is she helped my youngest brother create the Willy Wonka chocolate factory in the kitchen on the table I think that was the latest we ever stayed up our bedtime was always eight o'clock Monday through Friday and she um let us stay up a little bit later to complete that the project that she did with me in second grade um we uh created uh George Washington Carver's school where he was teaching um, children um, about, you know, all the educational things that they were deprived of. So we um, created a school and we did all the little chairs in there and the people and um, it did win, uh, I want to say like second place in the contest of the top three um, projects that were made. Number three, what you want to do is give your kids options on things that can help them do that thing that they like. 
So whether that's going to stores and uh, getting supplies, whether that's taking them to the museum, whether that's uh, showing them books on things that may, they may like or motivate them, or um, watching documentaries and uh, YouTube videos on things. That's something you can help to feed their talents. The fourth thing is remember that it's not about you, okay? What your kid likes, what your kid naturally wants to do, what your kid is passionate about has nothing to do with you making them like something for the sake of you really wanted to have a football player or you really wanted to have so a, a daughter or a son that can really sing really good. If that's something that they don't want to do, then they're not going to do it. Um... Number five, uh, make sure that your kid can take constructive criticism. And if they can't, talk to them about, you know, ways that people aren't saying that they're never going to be good or they can't do something. But just make sure that they know that what they're doing is really good, but there's a way that they can get um, better at, at it. So it's not a bad thing. You always want to improve and reiterate to them that you always want to improve personally on being a good mother or a good father or whatever it is that you do in life. You always want to improve on how you can do that a bit better so they can understand that it's a natural thing to get constructive criticism. Number six, understand how bold your kids are. Are your kids very bold? Are they very curious? Are they willing to try things? Or are they um, shy or backed by fear? And understand if your kid can be trusted. If you give them a tool to use, can they be trusted to use it and uh, give it back? Or be trusted to borrow someone else's things for the sake of them handling it correctly and returning it? Things like that. Number seven, never limit your kids or or not allow them to be themselves. I understand you want your children to be well behaved, yes. But when it comes to them being funny or them being uh, uh, witty or them, you know, being smart, don't uh, make them insecure to where they downplay themselves for the sake of probably not making somebody else feel less than or probably not feeling somebody else feel um, like they're not something that they are. Let your child, like, understand that being themselves is very important. Number eight, share. Anya, stop it. Stop it. Number eight, um, share your likes with your kids. So anything that I like, I always share with my kids. My kids know that I like art. I like to paint. I like to go to the museum. I like to create things in my room. I like to move um, around furniture. I love photography. Um, They know that I like to uh, go places on a whim. They know that I'm very spontaneous. They also know that I'm a candy addict. So I don't hide that from them. And once they see that you're secure and it's okay for you to do the things that you like, they're going to be more open to doing the things that they like. Number nine, allow your kids to draw or color with you. I don't know, something about colors or free expression of having a blank piece of paper and being able to use something to put something on it that it kind of opens your child up to... um, a different way of thinking like there are no rules a blank piece of paper and a a way to put an image on it will always tell a child that there there are no rules to this do what you like do what was was going to work for you and i think more kids need to be in the environment that will allow them to do that number 10 the last one but never the least make sure that you congratulate them and salute them on their efforts. It doesn't matter if they didn't complete a task. What really matters is the fact that your child tried. There's a lot of adults in life that are passionate about things, love things, really wanna do things, but they're too afraid to try. They're too afraid to put in a little bit of effort to get an ending, rewarding result. And that's what's stopping them in life from being happy. That's what's stopping them in life for, getting to the next level of where they need to be is they're afraid to try. 
Don't ever allow your child to feel like they're stupid for trying. No, you're never stupid for trying, but it's impossible for you to know what's out there, what opportunities will come if you don't put that effort out. This is how you feed your kids' talents. Bye. Thank you guys for listening to Cozy Womb Podcast. Please let us know your thoughts at 470-210-8752 or on Instagram at Cozy Womb Podcast or Twitter at Cozy Womb Pod. Or you can definitely email us at Cozy Womb Mama at gmail.com. See ya! Bye! Bye!